Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to call the Waterways Advisory Committee meeting May 23rd, 2024 to order. Could we do a roll call? Uh, Committee member Liptock. Uh, here. Committee member Neely. Here. Committee member Kwan. Here. Committee member Sanders is not here. Committee member C. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Dyke. Dyke, here. Um, uh, uh, Chair Rabinowicz. Yeah, he's an excused absence. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where Terry is. You didn't excuse <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a quorum. Um, move to approval of the minutes. Has the committee had a chance to review the minutes and are there any changes or edits of note? Hearing none, um, a motion to accept? Moved. A second? Moved. A second. Um, so moved uh, a vote. To approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we'll move on. Public comments. This is the time when any person may address matter not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on the agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Any members of the public wish to make comments? Not seeing any, we will close public comment and move to committee business. Statement of purpose, the role of the Waterway Advisory Committee is to review development projects, both public and private, that are located adjacent to creeks and waterways for consistency with the goals, policies, and regulations for creekside development identified in the Santa Rosa General Plan, Zoning Code, Design Guidelines, and Citywide Creek master plan. While the committee does not take formal action on projects, it does provide advisory comments to the decision-making body. All development projects located adjacent to a creek or waterway are required to review, be reviewed by the WAC Waterways Advisory Committee prior to proceeding through the entitlement process. Okay, uh, committee reports. Does anyone on the committee have anything they'd like to report or discuss? Okay, um, I have one thing, uh, and this is something that I brought up before, um, has to do with um, parking for the committee members. Um, it, I'm not asking that we be paid to be on the committee, but I'd like us not to be charged to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. And so I, in the past, we've been issued temporary, at least some of us have been issued temporary parking passes. And I, I know that that, that would have some minor cost to produce in the passes for us, but I'd like to see if we can do that in the future. Noted, thank you. Thanks very much. A follow up on that? There was lots of non-permit parking at City Hall. I just parked there and figured if my car gets towed, Susie will yeah. take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually, there is a row of, uh, Free parking spaces in two large hours. parking lot. Like two hours. Yeah, it's got a two hours. So yeah. That, so let me finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say if you park there, you will get cited if yeah. you okay. park there for longer than two hours. So um, if that comes down to it, it as a you know temporary measure until we get this resolved, if you want to park there and we can make note of it and take a break after an hour, so everybody can go move their cars and we don't run into that situation, we can do that. Um, but that's for the next meeting. We'll think about yeah. that in June. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds fine. Yeah, because there's, I've noticed that the government is very efficient at parking enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've noticed it too. <laughs> okay, uh, is there any, any other discussion from the committee? Okay, and then we'll move to department reports. So this time is reserved for city staff provide a briefing on issues of interest. No action will be taken on these matters except to possibly place a particular item on future agenda for consideration. Okay, so we got the PED report, the pedestrian report, the planning, what is the PED? <laughs> planning and economic development. There it is. Okay, I, I don't know if you remember, but I asked last time that the agenda spell that out. 
Um, I see that didn't happen. So maybe for next time we can have that spelled out. We're working on the template with our city clerks right now. So we'll get that okay. updated for you. Okay. You guys are going to miss Steve. I can tell. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. So any reports um, from the fine economic development? Yes. Um, we have a, we sent out a, um, uh, what do you call that? Like a doodle poll or something. Sign a, sign up, a sign up genius sheet or link for a tour of the cannery building. We've had several requests, including from this board, for our boards and commissions and committees to, to see it. Um, we're avoiding, trying to avoid having um, more than a quorum or a meeting a quorum on any one of the tours. So we've offered three no more than three uh, board committee or commission members per per tour. Um, I, and I, I think, Steve, or Mark, that you had uh, signed up. I did sign for, right away, yeah. Did you sign up for one or two? I signed up for two. I wasn't sure it was okay to maybe have. You can bring a guest, but yeah. let's get a guest name on there sure, if you that. like. I'll get that. I, I, not, I don't want everybody to do that just because <laughs> Mark is doing it, because we do have a cap. I'm fine with it though, and if it, if it's not going to be fair, uh, yeah. We'll I put that in there just in case it was allowed. If it wasn't, it's but please put the, the guest name because we're trying to manage the quorum issue. Okay. You should be able to go right back into the same link where you had originally yeah. and get it changed. And we didn't yeah. know if you were signing up for two board members or. Oh right, right. No, that. I can't speak for and the board members. Once everybody signs up, when all the. Um, other other boards sign up. We'll go ahead and, and fill the groups and kind of send out a there are several city staff members that also want to go on the tour. I haven't I haven't told anybody from water. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll extend the invitation over to you guys too. So Susie? Yeah. I just forwarded it to Kyle. So the uh, the Cats yeah, out of the yeah. bag. <laughs> okay. If this is so we have a limit. Please don't forward the link anymore. If you'd like to forward it, talk to either me mm -hmm. or Crystal, preferably Crystal, because I'm buried in email right now and I don't want you to go forgotten. And I also have a guest I would love for Robert Ash, who's a uh, volunteer. Who go ahead. Go ahead and sign up, sign up, take a space on the link for him. I need to communicate with him now that I know that we can do this. And would he need to attend as my guest at the same one, or could he sign up independently? I prefer he sit in with you. Okay. Yeah. You. That way, and you can. Yeah. There's three options. You don't. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that is it for department reports right now. I I want to say actually this is kind of a Susie report. If you do email me and I don't get back to you within 24 hours, please call me. I respond so quickly to telephones. And if you saw what my email looked like right now, you'd understand why that request is coming in. So um, I am always available when I'm not working in the office. I check my voicemail. Uh, I will get back to you within one or two business days. Okay. My business days. Appreciate that. No. <laughs> and thanks for the opportunity for the fanery. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I'm really, really looking great. forward to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I just got nudged one too many times. Finally did it. And yeah, they were super. They're they're very proud of that project. And I'll say I was the planner on that. And I'm very proud of that project too. And I'm dying to see what it looks like. Right. Okay. So that's the planning reports. Um water department. I think you guys are up. Yeah. Good. Brief presentation for you all today. So I can anywhere of course. I, I, I'm not familiar how to get it up and running, so I'm going to let good. you know. I think he stopped me at buildings. Yeah. Good to go. And this isn't, would you share with your script? So that share and pick your screen to share. And then the share button down. Hey, good morning, Vice Chair Dyke and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Kyle Sponberg, and I'm an environmental specialist with the Water Department Stormwater and Creek section. And to kick off our department report today, I just want to provide you all with a brief update on our creek stewardship program. 
Um, and then my coworker, Kellen, will follow up with some little updates on our Pogan Creek restoration project as well. <clears throat> it's either arrows or clicking them. He's really good with water, by the way. On the workaround. Okay, so um, our Creek Stewardship Program had a great year this previous year. Um, we are very lucky as a city to have a very engaged community who are eager to get involved in volunteer efforts and and work to keep our waterways and wildlife habitat clean. Um, so these statistics are from our calendar year report from the year 2023. Um, we'll be compiling a fiscal year report as well in the next couple months. Um, but just to give you a snapshot, um, we had over 10,000 participants in the, in the program this year, including um, close to 8,500 youth. Um, and that's mainly through our education outreach program that we have as a part of the Creek Stewardship Program. Um, we had 193 volunteer creek cleanups. That includes both um, community volunteer creek cleanups along Prince Royal Greenway and Roseland Creek, Colgan Creek, as well as individual cleanups that are led by our, by our local creeks as well. Um, we had 85 different creek restoration activities <laughs> on our various restoration reaches, and we collected over 900 cubic yards of trash. Um, and in total, you know, with all those uh, creek cleanups and restoration activities, we had close to 4,000 hours of community service and 8,500 hours of education on both watershed processes and pollution prevention. Um, so overall, really great year for the program. Um, the program is, I think, going on 22 years now, and this has been a really great, successful partnership between Sonoma Water and the city of Santa Rosa. So very lucky to be a part of it. A question on yeah. the the volunteer creek cleanups, yeah. 193. So like there's 365 days in a year. That seems, but I, it, it seems like a lot. Yeah, <laughs> if you total up all our activities with cleanups and different outreach and the education things I was talking about, I think it's over 362. So a lot of times when we go to schools and we contract out with an environmental educator. Okay. So there's there's a couple different crews running at the same time. Sometimes she'll give five different presentations to a school. We'll count that as different things. So it's it's a little bit how we we total it all up, but we have multiple crews and teams going out kind of thing. So then the the ones that are advertised, um, mm -hmm. that's a much smaller amount. It's a much smaller amount. Yeah. Like I mentioned, this is you know trying to capture some of our volunteers like okay. before Robert Ash and friends of the Prince Royal Greenway that are that are doing these activities that are supported by our program, but not always the community led ones. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, on that note, the 8,500 hours of education, if one person gives a talk to 30 kids for an hour, is that 30 of those hours? Yes. Okay. Good back question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to throw a couple photos in here to kind of to highlight some of our recent um, cleanups. And then I also have a couple photos at the end of kind of some typical uh, sites that we'll be cleaning up along along the creek so you can kind of get a visual for what that 960 cubic yards of trash actually looks like when it's down in that riparian area. So this was the um, Earth Day cleanup this year along the Prince Royal Greenway. Um, really great, enthusiastic group. Um, we were lucky enough to have one of our new community engagement um, city team members come out and take some great photos for us, uh, which is the one on the right and the left. Um, also on Earth Day, um, we had a class from Summerfield Waldorf hop on their bikes and come all the way down from Willowside and bike down the Santa Rosa Creek Trail and met me at Pearson Street and we did a cleanup along along Santa Rosa Creek and then they biked back after having lunch at Olive Park. So mm. that was just a, a feel-good, fun event for the kids and they all had a great time. Um, so they're not... So pretty stuff, but just, you know, it, we talk about volumes of trash and, and what we're cleaning up along the creeks a lot, but I think it's a unique opportunity to see exactly what that looks like. Um, this is a typical site that, you know, has been abandoned for, you know, weeks, if not a month and, you know, things are saturated. So um, just a shout out to our crews that, that go in there. Uh, a lot of times we're working with county crews, members of our staff are 
conservation course to get in there and clean this stuff up so it doesn't um, you know fall into Matanzas Creek, which was probably only 20 feet down slope from, from where that site was. So that's just a little before and after photo there. And same thing here, um, you know, trash can get spread out pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, our goal is to try and time it where we can clean this stuff up before it makes an impact on the waterways. Um, I think with that, we'll move on to the Colgan Creek uh, update, unless there's any more questions about Sorry, yeah. before and after pictures. Yeah, those are great. Any, any feel for whether the amount of trash on the creeks is increasing or decreasing? I'm actually very glad you asked that because I had a note and I forgot <laughs> to mention it. Um, you know, when I'm pulling up the numbers and my coworker Michael and I are out there collecting trash, we want to try and get as, as high a number as possible. So we kind of challenge ourselves to collect as much as possible. We've actually seen a decrease in the last year, um, close to 20%, oh, good. both in encampments and volume of trash along the creek. So at first, when I told Michael it was less than a thousand, he's like, man, we always get over a thousand. But I think it's important to talk about because it's a testament to the, co the cooperation, coordination, um, a lot of the programs that the city's doing. You know, it's a, it's a multi agency and multi departmental effort. And I think it shows that some of these, Kind of new strategies and approaching approaches that we're tackling this issue with are working and we'll see it's a it's a small snapshot to see that decrease but there has been a, a slow decrease over the last couple of years right. um, and it's encouraging for me to, to see that cooperation between the agencies and departments um, having some of and some of these programs did you have a question? i did and, um do you have a way of looking at and this is it's impressive um can could you find out and then tell us <clears throat> what this looks like in comparison to say other towns or cities that have creek stewardship programs that That's you know you yeah. know like especially if they're the same size or they're bigger or they're smaller that would be yeah quite interesting. yeah i think it's a great question i don't have the answer for you yeah. right now i'm happy to look into it i think our city is relatively unique and our team in general having a dedicated creeks team that does voluntary restoration. A lot of times restoration is kind of a mitigation for some other project. So mm -hmm. we're lucky to have this type of program, I think. And if but, it is unique, yeah. maybe other cities and towns might want to hear about it yeah. more. Right? Yeah, our our stormwater say. team, um, our Streets to Creeks campaign and everything just won a bunch of awards uh, this last year at CASPO, which is the Stormwater Conference. Um, because they're, you know, we work in tandem with Parallel, you know, objectives, but uh, yeah, everyone was very impressed with some of the stuff that we were able to do as a team. Thank you for all that you do. You're going to um, Two things. Mm -hmm. First, can you do a simple math conversion? Uh, Cubic yards of trash mm -hmm. means nothing to me. Yeah. I can picture dumpsters. How many so a, dumpsters? A dump truck is typically a 10 yard dump truck. Um, so if we're talking about a thousand, hopefully I did math right. It's about a hundred dump mm -hmm. trucks of trash, and that's down from one hundred and twenty. Like it's like twenty I think, dump trucks. I think the last know. year was eleven hundred cubic yards, over okay. nine hundred fifty. So it's not a. She's going to hold you to that twenty percent. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of stuff this year, and hopefully we can now maintain that. <laughs> Also, um, as the city annexes other regions, the miles of creek goes mm -hmm. up, so it is not a static situation. Right. There could be a jump mm -hmm. in garbage, but a decrease in garbage per however you me measure yeah. creek miles moving forward, and that might be a good asterisk when next year if we have an annexation. Yeah. Um, and it will also mean you have more responsibilities with every annexation, probably without additional resources. So that's it's always good for us to keep in mind we're doing more with this. So we got the Southeast Greenway coming up. I think there's a waterway that runs through there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that will yeah. be an added to that section. Is, uh, is Santa Rosa going to um, have a presentation or anything at Casca? This time it's a Sacramento. So it's a lot closer. You guys, I know our stormwater team typically goes. Yeah, I don't know what the plan is as far as presentation. 
Because um, on on Vic's note, this might be a, a good, I mean, even just a poster board of what you guys do would be really cool. Yeah, after the last conference, we talked about it being a, a good topic to right, present on next year. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, I'm Kellen Johnson, also an environmental specialist at um, Peace Team. And I wanted to give you all an update on our Cold and Creek restoration project, which you are familiar with right now, generally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're entering phase three and exciting things happening. So I just wanted to kind of give you all a little overview of where we are with phases one and two and where we're going with phase three. So um, phase one, as you all might remember, was done in 2014. Phase two, we did the main work of it in 2021 and then some of the planting in 2022. Um, and then phase three, we are planning for construction next summer. So it's coming up. We may be able to start some of the pre-work this fall, but it all kind of ends uh, various permits and how long those take. So maybe next summer. <laughs> so that house will be demolished but right there? Or to be determined, we have um, an archaeologist doing some review of that right now, uh, as well as the rest of the whole site for any tribal cultural resources that could be there. And so they are going to kind of update us in the next couple of weeks uh -huh. on the status of those um, buildings, the brick building and the house. Yeah. And then it's really kind of up to the parks department what they choose to do with those because the creek itself will not impact them. Um, but we may need to figure it out now if we decide to co-apply for the permits. Uh, with the parks department. So are those are those on Bellevue, those houses? Yeah, right in the corner, yeah, corner, they're on Bellevue, the corner of and Bellevue and Dutton. Dutton Meadow. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek revival house and an old funky brick building. But it looks kind of cool. It's cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, it's burned through in a bunch of places from the inside. Um, it has maybe an old kiln or something in it. Yeah. But um, we'll see. I'm not sure what the archaeologist is going to come back with. Um, so down here in the lower left corner, we've got a before photo from probably phase two um, showing, you know, we've got this typical trapezoidal channel that was straightened back in the late 60s, early 70s as a way to quickly convey stormwater out of the city, get it out of here. And now we're like, wait, 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 <laughs> we actually don't want to get rid of all of our water. Um, and we want the creeks to be able to serve their function of filtering stormwater and helping to clean it and slow it down and settle out sediment before it gets to the Laguna de Santa Rosa and the Russian River where we have salmonids and other endangered species who really need that clean water. Um, this is a big drainage and it drains from Taylor Mountain down through, you know, past Costco under a uh, highway and then cuts down in front of LC Allen High School. So, um, show you when we get to the map, but basically it kind of is a last stop for filtration before it gets into the Laguna. And so this is where we've been focusing our work, um, really trying to realign the creek. So we'll uh, kind of see some a video and some more goals on where we're going. But these other photos besides the bottom left are photos from phases one and two as they've started to fill in and grow plants and provide habitat. We're seeing some really good results so far. So here is a video. Yeah, this is just a quick little video of phase one, which is now 10 years old. Um, and you see it starting to really grow in. We're getting a lot of recruitment of plants along the creek. We're getting some really nice stands of native grasses. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of nesting birds and activity down there that we don't really see in the phase that's in phase three that hasn't been restored yet. And you can see these nice big meanders and now they're developing, as you all probably are aware, these uh, neighborhoods along the edges of it that will, I think, really get to benefit from the restoration work that's been done. So it's just kind of nice to see a little overhead view of it. It's a little jumpy and slow in here, but... Is this drum footage? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So we'll be able to fly kind of a repeated drone mm -hmm. pattern mm -hmm. over the three phases and watch them grow over time, right. which will be pretty cool. So you can see it's really starting to fill in nicely. We still have some, you know, oaks and things that are quite small, but they'll get there. Any um, invasives at all? There's definitely invasives, but it's not, I mean, it's kind of like ubiquitous everywhere, but we don't have any of the really bad ones. Like the Himalayan blackberries pretty well in check. Some of those things that um, 
you know, the poison water hemlocks and those things that can really take over, we've been able to keep those in check. And it's one of the upsides to the way, you know, there's a lot of energy that has to go into digging one of these big creeks out and redoing it. It's not like the ideal way. It would be better if it was just, you know, in a good shape to start with. But if you have to do that, the nice thing about it is that we can like really get the roots of a lot of those invasive species. And then with the work of all of our different crews, plus the high school students go down there from LC Island High School with our education program and they help with the restoration work. So they're going out and doing, you know, removing invasives and then sprinkling seeds or replanting um, sedges that they've already established and they can kind of transplant them from one location to another. And then we water them and help maintain them. So even though this site is done with its maintenance work, technically we still go out there all the time and do maintenance. So is there signage up on this site promoting the um, restoration? There is. Yeah. And I think this third phase will have even more signage, but yeah, there's some really interesting signage about um, basketry plants and native use of the area and things that really tie it into LC Allen High School as well. Um, so some of our goals for phase three coming up here is to restore about 2,500 feet of the channelized creek. Uh, you can see the top photo is what it looks like now, and we're trying to, after restoration, go more towards that meandering pattern. Um, that'll just slow the water down and give it contact time with plants that can really pull nutrients and pathogens out of the water. Um, we're actually already seeing in our water quality monitoring a really great reduction in pathogens in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, even in phase two, which is so new, from beginning of the reach to the end of the reach, we're seeing a pretty great reduction in those pathogens. Mm -hmm. And then from phase one all the way, or from two all the way down to one, even then goes through this unrestored section in the middle, we're still seeing a really nice reduction. So that's kind of the first piece to get better. And then over time, more and more water quality benefits will come as it grows in. The drone footage we just saw, that's phase... That's phase one. one. So that's the 10-year-old section. All right. And what about south of Bellevue, all the so, way down to Stony Point? So at that point, we cut out of the city limits, and that part is Regional Parks Trail. Okay. It's steep, so the shape isn't great, but it does have really nice riparian canopy cover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not really in our jurisdiction to be able to do much with it, but it at least has got nice cover. It's got good shade. All so right. it keeps the water cool and... Um, if we can send clean water in there from our area, it should stay pretty clean in there. Mm. Um, Even when that area is annexed, will it become city? I don't know how that would work. I would imagine it might stay with regional parks, but maybe if that area gets annexed, it would become city. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, so yeah, we want to create this meandering channel where the water can slow down and reduce erosion. Um, we can see when it's raining this kind of, even when it's not raining, you know, you can see the water just gently lapping against these eroded sides and pushing sediment into the creek. And so that section of creek is quite muddy looking when other sections are looking cleaner. Um, and so really uh, reducing that bank erosion will help water quality a lot. Um, same with the invasive species, getting rid of those, constructing in-stream habitat features. So those are those log features that you saw some images of. Um, as well as some other willow-based kind of wall structures to protect the banks. They both protect the banks, and they also provide some high water refugia. When we do get big storms, there's places for animals to hide out. Um, we're going to plant over 2,500 native riparian trees and shrubs, uh, install pollinator and basketry plantings. So the pollinator plantings in particular, we're working on a grant that I'll get to in a minute, but might provide quite a lot of monarch habitat. Um, so we'll get to that. Uh, and we also hope to include artwork uh, as part of our, you know, trail process and then the community education piece. Um, we will increase the flood capacity from 25 year storm to 100 year storm. So that's a really great um, benefit to all the neighbors around there to make sure that the creek is staying in its banks. And then we'll construct a paved ADA um, accessible bicycle and pedestrian path along the creek with a pedestrian bridge at the corner, the southeast corner, um, to be able to connect what will be two parts of the park. So this is where we're looking, <clears throat> excuse me. So <clears throat> um, phase one, you can't see my mouse, can you? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, this is phase one down here. So you can see it's starting to meander. This blue, light blue line is the old creek channel. So it comes up here, makes this kind of, oh, my mouse is frozen. Yeah, it goes, yeah. Oh, there it goes, okay. Yeah. Um, it makes this 
90 degree turn that's pretty artificial and then heads north in a straight fashion and then we've got phase two to the north and so what we'll be doing is you know widening the existing maintenance roads pushing them out away from the creek so that we have more space to create those meanders and more uh, low ratio banks um, that are not sloughing off hopefully um, and then we'll get this really nice wide section in the middle and then the park neighborhood park will be developed on either side in those kind of light yellow areas. Has, uh, has vandalism been an issue at all? Has there been any damage done to that? So far it's actually been pretty good. We sometimes get people working away on the, um, the like kind of wooden fence mm. up in the north section. I think there's some active youth down there maybe who I, I don't I'm not seeing camps but I'm just seeing the mm -hmm. fence kind of getting hacked at um but really it's not been you know a little That's under good. the bridges different things but it's not bad I think that we have a lot of you know the high school students are engaging with the site so I think it's less desirable for graffiti and that kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. uh, another point of clarification We've taken two field trips in the last couple of years. And this is the area that we've been out yes. and looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, right. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And so, follow up on, um, for all intents and purposes, everything in that area is going under construction around yeah. the creek. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really valuable timing um, that we've been able to start acquiring these pieces of land around it to give space for the creek to expand and meander. Um, because it will all get developed. And once it's developed, as you all know, it's hard to go back. So um, it is, yeah, it's been good timing and good foresight on the part of even others who help develop these plans. Um, so here's our draft plan. This was done by the Parks Department and still needs to go under review with um, a public input process. So things may not get laid out exactly like this, but just to give you kind of an idea, we've got some play areas in red there, um, the kind of square areas in the lower left are potential play fields of various sorts. Um, there will be trails. There's going to be some sort of native like meadow like areas um, with probably quite a few oaks and different things growing through there on the park side. And then we'll have the pedestrian bridge down in the corner. I think that's actually going to get pushed a little bit more to the east. Um, and then we've got these little crosses, uh, they're kind of hard to see over there, but we've got several little crosses. Those are wood habitat structures in the creek, um, and the creek will take that meandering pattern through. Could you remind me if that's a neighborhood or a community park plan? That's a neighborhood park. So it's approximate acreages? I think it's, um, two to three. looks like three acres north of the creek, it says in here, and then I'm guessing, uh, let me hide that, the south area, I can't quite see because it's being blocked. It's blocked by my screen sharing. Um, so, but bonus help. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, 0. 0.8 acres. So 3.8 acres. So is it is it safe to say that this is one of the biggest creek restoration projects in the city? Well, it's right up there with PMG. I mean, I mean, space one for length, but maybe not for cost. Yeah. yeah. No, Prince Greenway was quite a thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, and then this is occurring in uh, Southwest Santa Rosa, which is uh, uh, lacking, been lacking in no, parks. It's definitely and, is lacking in yeah. parks. It's lacking in open space. It's the most underserved quadrant in terms yeah. of parks and open space. Um, the neighborhood to the north here is a like a low income housing, Burbank housing development that has gone in. Um, and then I think that. You know, as this area fills in, there's going to be a lot of users on this trail. Just and there's really no automobile parking associated with this, is there? Um, the park will probably have a small parking area put oh, into well. it. I'm not sure where exactly that's going to land. Oh, okay. But um, mostly but it's think, a walk-in park. Though. Yeah, I think the park will have a small area and a lot of it will be walk-in. Yeah. Uh, neighborhood parks are not required to have a, a parking. Okay. They also don't have services like bathrooms. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Um, and I would assume that this park at most optimistic, we're looking at 2026, 2027. Yeah, they've been saying about three years. I think they have some of the funding, but not all. Um, could be, I'd say, three to five years, mm -hmm. probably before construction starts. So to be determined, but that's the projected time frame. Okay, so grants wise, phase one, um, we're not including here the um, 
for phase one and two, the funding that was used to purchase additional lands, because those were pretty small parcels, um, but about 1.6 million for phase one, 2.1 million for phase two. And so far for Colgan um, three, we've got 7.6 million. So we're, it's a bigger area. Things have gotten more expensive. We're doing a lot of concerted, you know, artwork, with paving things. So the price is going, you know, higher than the other two phases, but it's also uh, a much bigger area. It's almost double the size. Um, so phase three funding, we've got 1.2 million committed from Stoneley County Ag and Open Space District so far for acquisition of the Bell parcel, which is that big rectangular parcel that will become part of the park. Um, and they've also funded in previous phases acquisition of other parcels. Uh, the Urban Streams Restoration Program has given us 4.4 million for construction. Um, and now the Wildlife Conservation Board uh, they're actually meeting right now, the board meeting. So we are on the agenda for hopeful approval um, today. Wow. And that will be the final 2.2 million, um, or it's actually, yeah, 2.01 million. I'm not sure where I got 2.2 there. Um, but it will be hopefully approved today. We think it's got a great chance of being approved. Then the budget, um, the May revise to the state budget will includes re uh, allocating some funds to the Wildlife Conservation Board. If for some reason that didn't happen, they may not be able to fund it. So they're going to give us conditional approval today. Um, and then we'll know July 1st whether for sure it gets funded, but we think so. Um, so exciting. Are, are those two bottom ones, are they state or federal? What are they? Those are both state. So the oh. Wildlife Conservation Board is. Um, a state kind of group with CDF and W as well as several other um, departments and members of the public who form the board and they fund a whole bunch of different kinds of projects but they're kind of just getting into the more urban context um, so this is one of the one of the first and few projects that they've really done in the urban context so it's kind of exciting um, and then the urban streams restoration program is the um, water resources. yeah department of water resources okay. things um, so that's one of the grant programs that has funded previous phases with us as well. Let's see, did I miss it back? Okay, that's it. Any questions? Great briefing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can dovetail right on to the mm -hmm. end of that, right around that phase one, I think. You guys are going to be seeing, we just got an application for a waterways advisory committee meeting. Concept review for a housing project. Okay. Is that the one uh, west of Dutton Meadow? Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's coming your way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So that takes us to the next general item. Uh, yeah. Sonoma Water Department. I don't see any representatives here. Um, sir, Susan, is there anything to report from Sonoma Water? Okay. And we'll move on to our scheduled item, which is a certificate of modification request for 4301 and 4500 Fister Drive. Um, so we'll turn it over to planning. Thank you. Okay, great. I think we're ready. Good morning, Vice Chair Dykey and committee members. Um, my name is Sheila Walski. I'm a city planner with planning and economic development. Um, the item before you for comment today is a modification at 4301 and 4500 Vista Drive. <clears throat> this modification is based on the final map that was recorded about 50 years ago for the Vista subdivision. It established 50-foot building setback lines from the west parcel lines on both 4301 and 4500 Fister Drive. These building setback lines result in parcels with approximately 25 feet width of buildable area. 
And this slide depicts the proposed modification exhibit and shows the existing or old building setback lines and the new or proposed building setback lines. Uh, the proposed modification would be aligned with the zoning code scenic road combining district setback for Brush Creek Road, um, which is instead measured from the edge of Brush Creek Road, not the parcel lines. And this modification would need to be approved by the city's planning commission. This aerial map gives you a neighborhood context of the area. The two properties that are a part of the project modification are noted on this slide with the yellow star. Uh, the blue star is pinned on 4306 Cox Court, which is not included in the modification project, but I'll go over why it's being included in this presentation. The slide depicts the general plan maintenance destination and zoning of the properties, which are low density residential and PD scenic road combining district, respectively. Okay, this is a more zoomed in aerial view of the properties that are a part of the modification project. <clears throat> On the left or west side is Brush Creek Road. And as you can see, both properties are vacant. And the reason this is before the Waterways Advisory Committee today is the Citywide Creek Master Plan conceptually shows a paved trail through the 4500 Fister Drive property and the property just to the south, 4306 Fox Court. There's a language from the Citywide Creek Master Plan that deals with this area of Rankin Creek Reach 1. It notes that there are existing sidewalks in the neighborhood for a connection to Montecito Boulevard and Brush Creek Trail, and that a proposed paved trail from Fister Drive to Cox Court would provide a more direct route. Also included in the Citywide Creek Master Plan is the following policy language related to respecting private property rights. This is policy PR 2-2, which reads, every effort will be made to avoid exercising the power of eminent domain for the purpose of implementing the plan. Where possible, the plan includes an alternative located within public right-of-way to proposed improvements shown on private property. The alternative of choice would be determined at the time of plan implementation. This determination would be made by decision-making bodies, considering recommendations by the Waterways Advisory Committee. An alternative, albeit less direct, exists in that existing public sidewalks can be used as connections. The Planning and Economic Development Department requests that the Waterways Advisory Committee provide comments on the public right-of-way alternative to the proposed paved trail through 0500 Fister Drive, and 4306 Cox Court. Oops. Okay, uh, this slide um, is the conclusion of my report. Here is my contact information. If you have any questions on the certificate of modification project, um, I'm here for those. In addition, Steve Brady, the city's senior environmental specialist with Santa Rosa Water is here to address any questions related to the citywide Creek master plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, committee members, uh, any questions? Um, a little bit of a complicated. Yeah, I'm just concept. curious how often this is done. Is this a fairly regular occurrence that this kind of application is made or? A certificate of modification. Yeah. Um, it just depends. Uh, final maps sometimes have these uh, kind of limiting building setback lines. In this case, this is one that is fairly extreme. Uh, for the 4,500 Fister Drive property, that one has been for sale for, uh, I think we've, planning department has had questions on it for well over a year. And um, once potential buyers look at that building setback line, they generally do not come back. So, um, because there's, why. I'm sorry. Yes, and that is because, as I mentioned during the presentation, it gives you maybe 20 to 25 feet of width um, to build on that property. The existing line does. 
That's correct. Okay. Correct. So that exhibit where they showed the new line, that would be um, that would be in compliance with the city's scenic road combining district, which measures the setback from the edge of Brush Creek Road, 50 feet, not from the parcel line. So as you can see from 4500, there was a curve there and it was closer to the road. Can you put that slide back up? I can. Yeah, give me just a moment. So basically, they look, somebody's looking for room to build a house. Yeah, they're trying to get a couple more houses. Uh -huh. And why the original proposed paved trail and why was it never built? Do we know? The plan has not been implemented yet. Uh, Steve can probably speak to that, but at which point they may be looking to do other work in that area. They would implement that part of the plan and perhaps you know purchase property or purchase right of way. Neither of these properties has um, an easement to provide for, for a paved trail. It just shows conceptually on our GIS that a, a trail could be in this location and in the Citywide Creek Master Plan that it, it could be a more direct route. So right now, people walk down the Brush, Brush Creek Road sidewalk. The alternative is they'd walk on a paved trail over to Cox Court and then wind around the neighborhood to get down to Montecito. Is Correct. That so in, in this case, instead of going through here, and these signs, I, I do want to point out, the, these are private property. If you look at, I think, the zoomed-in view, you can see that... Um, we'll call it historic trails. <laughs> These properties are posted as private property, no trespassing. However, no one is living there. Um, some community members have um, gone over onto these properties and created their own trails through the properties. However, um, in this area, and this is not a great view, but there are sidewalks existing on all the developed properties, including the vacant properties where people could go around and connect here. Is, is there a sidewalk on Brush Creek? Brush Creek, what, Brush there Creek? There is a trail. Um, on the, on the right hand side that we're looking at or the left? On the right hand so side? So I'm just like really on the east side. Slide. Yeah, on the east side. On the east side. A red concrete. Yes, so over here, there are trails connecting on this side. What about further south? Further south, well, let's do a street view. There is, let's go here. I think out there, it actually is not continuous. There's, there's, there's a break. Of sidewalk, there's sections of uh, informal pathways and paved pathways with asphalt, but there's really not a continuous uh, pathway or sidewalk along the roadway. And so the parcels uh, go out into the well, center line of the, the creek. These parcels here. No, no. Oh. Up, do the do the parcels go out to the center line of the creek further south? If, in general, they do. Although, some, or the city actually owns. Oh, great! A That's even better. In the area of the creek, right. and so the water has oh, the creek oh, oh, are you on the oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so. We. No, it's all right. We need to look at unless the city shares. I really don't. Oh, here, uh, the like they don't give you any context. I know. Okay. Well, we have to dig in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, if she's already on oh, your panelist, then she's already staff, staff. In looking at the previous slide, the aerial with the lot lines, um, is it safe to assume that the earlier development that's borders on the creek did not go through this level of scrutiny? That it's these two orphan parcels that are under the microscope and nobody else had to go through these hoops? Right, because, well, and I don't know why these have not developed. Um, we do know now that when people are coming in, the setback lines are what are discouraging them, but there are several on Cox Court that are also um, vacant, and these are all owned by the same owner. So it could have been, hey, we weren't ready to develop for however long we're holding on to them for a period of time. She's trying to share the screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm trying to yeah. fix the screen so you can share this. Oh. And so, oh, new share. Probably say Thank you. Some of these parcels are the leftovers that have been held by a family. We Correct. Be going through a it's held in a trust. Now you're sharing. They want to get rid of these white elephants. 
and the city is essentially, sorry, it's 2024. Here are the rules that you now have to play by unless you can get it exempted. I think my other question is the second parcel is larger because it dog tails. The, um, the I'm gonna call it the top parcel looks approximately the same lot size as the rest of the developed houses minus consideration of the setbacks. The other one with the dog tail is a, is a much larger parcel. They, they just want to get rid of the roadblocks so that they can sell these things. Mm -hmm. So there's a little more developable land, and but at the same time, the Scenic Road Combining District applies to these properties. There, this one, um, 4301 and 4500 Fister, which are shown on this map here, are part of the modification. And then why we're here today is this one, 4,500, and the one to the south of it do show that conceptual paved trail through that. But if the desire is to say, well, that's okay, we can deal with having a, a direct route, a less direct route, I should say, but using public sidewalks, because that's an alternative, then we would not need 4,306 to have to show a proposed paved trail because it would be essentially deleted from the 4500 Fister Drive. There would be no need for it. Would, would we be able to look on a big map on that screen at what that use of the sidewalk would look like, what that trip, what that path would look like for somebody on Cox Court? I'm not sure I understand what so what path do you want to go into Cox Court? Is that what you're saying? No, like the, there are sidewalks. Yes. That, so they are public. And you can and the idea is there is a public access, which is using the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So I just want to see what what that looks like compared to this idea of the paved path. Where like if I'm living on Cox Court, what do I have to do to get over to Brush Creek? without are you just using public access sidewalks <laughs> so here's cox court these are the vacant parcels and as you can see it's not just one of them this is 4306 cox court here and here's where people have created their own trail mm -hmm. through private property here are the sidewalks the existing sidewalks Be a better graphic for you. Maybe you can get to here because it shows the creek path. And then, oh yeah, that's uh, true too. Okay, and then we can also go out to Ariel. Susie thinks that's probably a good idea, and that's probably a good idea. So we'll pop this on. Move over here. This is the forty-five hundred one that's shown. And then I'm going to put a layer on here so you can kind of see what we're talking about. <laughs> so this is the proposed trail that's showing. This is the 4306. There's the 4500. These are the two parcels that are part of the modification project. So if we zoom out, Whoops, it's a little hard to do this with the with a yeah. a non mouse. <laughs> Excuse me while I struggle. Okay, so if we can pan over here, so instead of cutting through here, you would go over here from Cox Court to Cox Drive, up Fister Drive, and over here and meet up with those little trails, which don't appear to be entirely contiguous when we went to Street View, right? So it's at what, some point when there's, you know, probably funds to do it, I assume, Steve, we'll look for maybe getting additional right-of-way or something to expand the creek trail out there. On, on Brush Creek. Creek. I'm well, not certain there, of that. There was a project for a Brush Creek Road pedestrian pathway to be contiguous. 
I want to say like 15 plus years ago. And I even did some of the surveys for that. And eventually, the project just didn't take a hold or eliminate it. It just it wasn't feasible with all the private property and the large oak trees that were there. So we were even trying to like wind through the oak trees along the road. So I don't believe there's any plans for that current. current Um, our scope of influence as a board, is it anything beyond the um, addressing the potential change in the setback line? It, it is actually not even addressing that. That is something the Planning Commission will has purview over. This is really just a full disclosure. Um, what the Planning Commission will be looking at is if there are any recorded easements on the property. There aren't any recorded easements. Um, I'm bringing this forward to you today because this does show on the property. And, um, and in working with Steve, we're looking just for feedback because this does show in the Citywide Creek Master Plan. However, no action has ever been taken by the city to get any easements, to purchase any property, so it's really more of a full disclosure to the committee to say this exists in, in concept, but the private property owners are looking to make some changes. So at some point when the Citywide Creek Master Plan um, is perhaps amended, this might go away, but we're looking for feedback from, from the committee on that. Yeah. So um, how these parcels go will lay the groundwork for potentially some other parcels which are laying in wait for development to potentially fast track. These are the first two that have come up on Brush Creek in a while under this microscope. Yes, and you know most of these developed um, south of here. So this one, and these are all held in the same family trust, all these ones that are still vacant. Um, all the ones to the south are have completely developed. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's probably why a conceptual <laughs> uh, paved trail was shown there, because these are the two remaining ones that are left, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Um, the trust is uh, Fister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Fister, Fister, we got the road named after them. Yeah. And it's and, the Fister subdivision. And then they, they actually own um, other property uh, south of there. Um, so in between the creek, which has the city of Santa Rosa, and these parcels is a long stretch that parallels the creek. And that's Fister also. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just interesting. Um, Okay, are there any other questions um, from the committee before we make our comments? So the so the creek is a considering 4500 4, it looks like the creek is across Brush Creek Road from yeah, that parcel. It crosses over but the bridge. It crosses yeah. just to, sort of just crosses it at the south end of that yeah. parcel, right? Yeah. Okay. So is the thinking that the city someday could could buy these parcels and create a little park or something, or they haven't done so yet, right? But that's the maybe that was when the master plan was put together, right? That kind of thinking. And then looking at this, you know, because all of these parcels developed, you know, probably most of them over fifty years ago, some seventy or more. There's very limited access in this area. Yeah. Limited access to, to if you were to try to create a park in uh -huh. the area. I, you know, I think I believe there is a proposed one over here that the city is potentially looking at. In fact, it's it's listed on the um, on GIS. It's not developed. At some point, that could you know, if there are funds. Oh, you um, mean that one is called Upper Brush Creek right, Park? Right, right. Well, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, it's right across the street, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So and this wild lilac lane. lane. That is um, that, that, and that is. Oh, you mean that how you get that? there? It's yeah. really it's a it's a connection from the stuff on the east side of Brush Creek Road across to this the 
park area and the creek, um, right? As opposed to to tap to doing to doing the, the loop or you know down cocks and around. Well, it's like good that. exercise. Well, I, I <laughs> yes, sure, sure. Um, if you're not in a wheelchair. <laughs> Um, if you are in a wheelchair, I suppose. Um, I wouldn't go holding your breath for that part, Vic. No, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not holding. So you're pretty clear yeah. like that. Did you have a comment? To, well, I'm so I, um. I, we're, you know, we're, we're sort of, we're looking at big things and, and I, I, I want to think, okay, we're waterways advisory. Let's think about Rincon Creek and access to Rincon Creek, I think. Isn't that right? Uh, because it is Rincon, it's not Brush Creek, it, it's Rincon Creek. That right. Um, and what, and I, and I. Well, when, yeah. when, I, when I look at it, I, I look down <laughs> south and I see how difficult it is. All, all along the way, so it's not like it's not like this. It's fully developed down no, south, I, so yeah, it, it, it would take I don't know what it would take to to connect it all the way down south. That's a huge undertaking. How, how far south are you looking? Well, I mean, there's connections I, I, way down where there's yeah, or like even right there, I think it's gravel. Yeah, maybe asphalt. Yeah, yeah. so the. The undertaking would be tremendous. Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to make sure we have all our questions answered, then we can make our comments. Okay. Any other questions to better understand or be clarity on this project? Because it is a little unusual for us to be looking at something like this. It's kind of in the vacuum. Yeah, Steve was here. I mean, he wrote the he wrote the plan. You know, so, and he's not here today. So if we if 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 they change the setback then to allow building houses. That doesn't preclude some kind of sidewalk or trail eventually along Brush Creek Road, does it? These will be maintained. This is 4301 and this is 4500. These will be maintained here. Okay. Right on right. Brush Creek Road. It's just the kind of historical paths would not be expanded to what would likely have to be 10 feet out of each property and paved. Okay. Yeah. And if I may, the, the, the lot line doesn't change and it's no. quite far away from just the edge the, of the road. It's just the it's building just envelope. It's just where, where the buildings right. be yeah. on the lot. Yeah. Um, and then, then Creek Setback will come into play after that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think both these properties are out, well outside the Creek Setback. Yeah, so that well, may not even apply. Yeah, for development, most likely, we have a 75-foot um, buffer, which just helps us if we want to say, hey, we may need some more information. This, this, this does not depict, why is this not working? Okay. Uh, oh, because I need to put this one on. This does not depict where they cannot develop, but it looks like most of this is outside of any creek setbacks. But again, the scenic road combining district um, is, you know, the 50 foot from edge of sidewalk, mm -hmm. or I excuse think, me, from edge of road. I think just that little southern section, that little tip mm -hmm. that comes out there might be the only thing, and that probably wouldn't be buildable anyhow. So, okay, so. Uh, yes. One more clarifying question. Yeah. Are there alternatives, if you, if I may approach the bench or whatever, <laughs> um, <laughs> if we have, uh, are there alternatives? If you wanted to create a trail from Cox Court to get over to potentially to the park or even just to Brush Creek Road, are there alternative paths, say, between these parcels down here? So, in other words, if 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 the setback was changed, there are still some options. If at some point the city would like to build access between Cox Court and well, and nothing says these this proposed line, this yellow line here is really just conceptual it yeah. could yeah. potentially go over here okay and then we could come back yeah. if this needs to develop and say hey is this feasible is it not it the citywide creek master plan does not say it goes through 4500 
and it goes through 4306. It is just depicted on GIS this way. And okay. possibly because people have created their own trails, yeah. um, regardless of the signage on the sites. Yeah. But a, a recommendation could be that we look for an alternative mm -hmm. to creating that path. It doesn't mean that it, it will happen. It, does, it just means that that's a recommendation from the Waterways Advisory yes. Committee. So, yeah. and, and, and uh, the people that are interested in purchasing these lots and going through this process, I mean, that can happen at, at the Planning Commission. Yeah. Um, engineering can look at the making sure it doesn't limit the development potential, right? Yeah. But we have pathways that run through our, right, up near Spring Lake. We've got them where they run from a neighborhood to the, the main mm -hmm. road. It's a pedestrian path. It's not, it's not a driving path. It's a pedestrian path. So, mm -hmm. and that's not nearly as much right of way. It's, mm -hmm. But that can be a recommendation mm -hmm. from yeah. the committee. Okay. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Okay, well, let's move to what our comments will be, Mark. Well, um, like I say, it's a bit of a vacuum looking at this. Um, and we've had the, the building envelope as it's laid out. It's been there for 50 years, basically. And which kind of led to my question is how often is this done? Is this something that's is just a routine thing that we shouldn't get too excited about? Or is it something that, well, this isn't done very often, you know? So it really have uh, some impact on my thinking. Um, as you said, it's away from the creek, so I think the water quality impacts are probably, you know, minor. But it does seem to be foreclosing some options for future access to that area by you know, shoehorning a couple more buildings in there. I mean, I know when I take the Brush Creek Road up, and then it just ends there at, at uh, what's the street there, the highway that it kind of... Highway 12? No, um, Montecito. Uh, yeah, Montecito, yes. And it'd be nice to continue from there, but it, but it doesn't. So, um, and that is how you would get to this area conceivably if the trail is ever uh, laid out. So, I wouldn't want to foreclose any options for allowing some kind of public access um, by, by taking this action. Okay, thank you, Mark. Carmen? Um, I'm surprised it took the landowners this long <laughs> <Yeah>. to do <laughs> <Yes>. this. <laughs> uh huh. Um, I don't know why Fister Drive, which dead ends into the creek, could not have access from that which is probably city property to the creek rather than through these private parcels. In reading the uh, letter of comment from the neighbor, I appreciated the city comments, which said, this is not city property, this is private property. Mm -hmm. We cannot control what happens on private property. And personally, I'd like to kick this to the planning committee where if neighbors wanted to voice their opinions, it's much more likely to happen at the planning committee meeting, which happens in chambers. Um, it could be a larger, better presentation. And really there's some educational tools, the difference between private parcels and city parcels, what your rights are as a neighbor with private property adjacent, as opposed to assuming anything that interests you belongs to the city and you can make it a park. It doesn't happen like that. So I see this as an opportunity to educate the neighborhood and um, landowners to start dumping what's left. I have no idea how many errors there are or what the tax liability is on stuff. But I think they're hemorrhaging and they just want. And I say, let's kick it to planning with your recommendations. Okay, Vic. I, I need to think. Okay, go. Kevin, we'll move we'll to you. Uh, well, it seems to me that given that it's private property and with that little bit in there about not using eminent domain. Yeah. where we shouldn't hear something, I, I'm not sure how it read, but um, I, 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 given that there's no Im impact on the creek setbacks, uh, no impact of changing that, that, that the setback line for the houses, 
I would think it, I mean, it seems like a reasonable project to me with the caveat that I would like to, to say that, that we, we want access to creeks and parks. And so the idea of encouraging the city to consider such access, say from Cox court, maybe it's a, maybe it's a small pedestrian pathway between two homes that are going to be built in the future, that kind of thing. I love that access all over the city because there are, because we have limited bike trails, especially anytime that there's a way I can cut through a neighborhood. If I'm on my bike, it's, it's welcome from a safety perspective. And then I think about kids being able to, to um, cut between neighborhoods and not always be funneled onto the main streets. We have so many cul-de-sacs in the city. Everybody wants to live on a cul-de-sac, not a thoroughfare. that there, that, that, that there's ways to crisscross the city and especially for kids to say, to say, to stay safe it's limited. So I think encouraging the city to, to look at that long term, but I think as far as these two parcels, I, I, it doesn't seem to be reasonable to limit the options of the private um, property holders in this case. I don't see any compelling reason to do so. And through the vice chair, um, do you mind if I ask a question of um, Steve Brady? Yeah, um, Steve, I, I'd like to get your input. I know this can change over time with Caltrans and whatever. What would be the absolute minimum on a, a parcel that I'm talking about width that would be needed for any sort of access? Or a pathway. Yeah. Yeah, so I think a class one would be a minimum of 10 feet. So. Mm -hmm. And what we typically see is, you know, you have a fence, a 10 foot path and a fence. So it kind of becomes a narrow corridor, but it is a connection. So uh, I think it's interesting to consider some alternative alignment. And that was a very good point. Our alignments shown in the Creek Master Plan are not exactly where a pathway should go. Mm -hmm. Really, it's more important, I think, to read talk about where you are and where you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. So if there's another way to get there, that can be the preferred alternative. Here, we're kind of trying to balance public and private uh, you know, or to get there. So it's kind, of, it's kind of a challenging site from that perspective. There are very many spaces within the Creek Master Plan where we actually show the proposed pattern on private property. Yeah. yeah, and I think the consideration was that this had been undeveloped so long. The aerial, as you can see, there's a informal illegal pathway there. But uh, so I think there was a potential that maybe it would become city property. Uh, was kind of the thought process there. So I think there is a adequate. Uh, Public alternative a little bit longer, but I think it's interesting to consider another uh, access from Cox or to the creek. And I'm going to dovetail onto that with our history with the, the fence line, the 10 foot, you know, pathway through there. It's typically, I, I think we've done eight feet of paving and then some uh, planting space on the side, but the police department, if those get very long, police department is opposed to them because they also become um, places for people to hide or go right. do, you know, more derelict kind of things. So um, not the, they don't get approved, but. Yeah, that, may, that was my first thought is the, the long stretches of yeah. 10 feet surrounded by fences do not feel safe mm -hmm. if I'm in the middle yeah. of nowhere, but if it's between a couple houses and it's short and, you know, then, not, not looking at the shortest distance. Would right. Be yeah. Beneficial. And so what we're looking at, like, let's say probably the shortest distance on the next parcel to the south would be about 83 feet to, or it, it would actually probably be more to get to, to anything to connect to. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to bring that up yeah. because if you're considering saying, you know, we'd still like an alternative to Cox Court, what could that mean in the future? Are we here in another year or two with the same predicament? Yeah. Okay, it's gotten to your time. Yes, right? yes, it is. <laughs> um, I did, so the, the actual question before us, um, which is, you know, 
should, do we do we have a problem with the, the modification proposed, which expands the building buildable area of the two lots at the corner of Fister? I don't I, I don't think we have it, um, any reason to say no to that. We're talking about a hypothetical um, paved pathway proposed in the Creek Master Plan. Um, and I, I, I mean, I'm sorry that we developed this, all of these little, you know, <laughs> bags, end of the bags, right? The coup de sac. I mean, like, and, and you're stuck. Yeah, you are stuck there if you live there. You, that, you know, and I, I that's too bad. Um, hmm. But that is what many, many people desire. Um, and I suppose whoever ends up at 4306 or 4310 Cox Court, can decide if they want to just scoot through what looks to be the leftovers of 2475 Brush Creek Road, right? And just kind of hop through there and get over to Brush Creek. Um, I don't think we can say anything. I, I just, I, I do, I do wish there was a connection. I wish there was a better connection than having to say, well, you've got your cul-de-sacs and you live on them and you have to walk all the way, go all the way around to get out. <laughs> Um, but that's true. I mean, if you're evacuating, you have to drive all the way around to get out. Um, so I don't, I don't have a, I, Susie, I did like your idea saying it can, is, can planning think of something? That would be great. If that is, that was a suggestion. Yeah. And yeah. Just because I'm more familiar with this, but yeah. it needs to be your idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, we'll get there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, <laughs> well, I think the question is, is the Waterways Advisory Committee interested mm -hmm. in still keeping a connection, knowing what we know now about the, the width that is needed and where it could potentially go and how this area has developed through what would be Cox Core, or is the Waterways Advisory Committee okay with going with the public right of way alternative, which is public sidewalks and a less direct route? Okay, Marco. No, I'm. I, okay. I'm, so I stepped off of my horse. So in <laughs> in Katati, uh, along the Laguna de Santa Rosa, they have a similar situation with uh, lines of houses with courts, except. They have alleys um, that are connecting the Laguna um, with these courts. Not every one, but most of them have that, and and it ends up being it provides access, and the the trail is continuous uh, all the way through Katari, and they've worked really hard to do that. And that's really what the goal the goal of our master plan is is to have pathways and walkways and access to all our creeks, except. Um, there's a lot of historical things that have happened. There's private property issues or all, all kinds of things that make that a big challenge, but doesn't necessarily change our goal. Um, so the, the idea I'm going to give to Kevin um, to, to look at our alternative uh, pathway, um, given all the different aspects that have to go into that, that might not uh, impact uh, the building or development of these parcels is a really good idea that should be explored. Um, that the, the lines were put in on the master plan, you know, how many years ago, um, as has been pointed out, is conceptual. And, and as it's a, basically, we want to get from one here, point here to point B, and we're not quite sure how, but this is the area where we'd like to have a connection. And so, um, as you said, in full transparency, you know, it wasn't like it was listed out in a narrative and it was discussed. It was just a line on the map. You brought it to us for us to consider. And personally, I really appreciate that for us to have this discussion. Um, I think we're, we're all in agreement that it's a, a little complicated, but I think we're all in agreement that that a building envelope should be expanded. Uh, we don't really have a say in that, but um, we we don't think that's a wrong thing to be doing. And that if there are setbacks that come into play on the southern part of the of the um, the one parcel, um, well, then it maybe it comes back to us. But uh, um, having an easement, eminent domain, all those things would just be another roadblock to the development of that. This is begging to be developed. Um, 
So that's my opinion. Is there any disagreement on how I sum that up? Or anything mm -hmm. you'd like to add to how I sum that up? I don't know if you answered the question. I liked very much how you summed it up. That was mm -hmm. great. Um, are we okay with public access or do we, or, and I wonder if it's a, and do we, or an, or do we want to continue to look for another connection? Well, I thought I said that we we want a, to look at an alternative. We connection. do want to. Yeah, we want that alternative to the public access. Yeah, we're not, we're not sitting here and saying public access yeah. as it stands now is just. Yeah, so fine. we could we could be we could be saying okay, we got this yellow line here. We put this in. Really important. Smart people put this in a long time ago. The city needs to make eminent domain on this, and we want that access. So we could be going that direction, but. I don't think that's the flavor oh, of what I, I'm hearing. I don't think any, I okay. agree with yeah, you. But, yes. but I am hearing that we think it's, we we want to develop access there. And so, and this, you know, Kevin's idea provides that alternative to be looked at and it can be looked at in the development and the planning commission. And if it does go before planning, I, I don't know if you guys will be here. I don't know if we'll be here, but bring it back to us. Let us know that it's going there so we can, yeah. Even if it doesn't impact the city set for the, the creek setbacks, mm -hmm. we'd still like to see how that's going to be. I guess if there's an access point that's going to be developed, we would come back to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Yeah. If there was, uh, mm, that's a good question. Because well, it's going if straight it's an to, access point, it would be done by the city. Uh, I, the city gets to get out of all kinds of stuff, but they, I'm guessing that, that whoever was doing it, we would be coming. Um, I shouldn't say gets out of all kinds of stuff. We don't have the same permitting requirements that the public does. So for a public access path that was being installed by the city, they wouldn't have permitting requirements. So there wouldn't be a trigger to come back to the Waterways Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I, I don't know who would be doing that, if that would be the, the uh, Stormwater and Creeks crew or Capital Improvements. So we can certainly, we will likely know, but... I'll likely be retired. <laughs> we're just putting out, we're just putting out there. We'd like to know about it. We are going, yeah. we, we will be going, Sheila will be going to the planning commission soon with this. this. Oh. It's, we're, we're in the throes of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a date scheduled yet. We're still working through um, receiving comments from other departments on their modification. Yeah. The modification side of it. But um, once we get that, it'll go to public hearing before the commission. And, um, okay. you know, we'll mention it, it's already semi-drafted that we've been here. And I will add the comments that the Waterways Advisory Committee is looking, still looking for an alternative um, through Cox Court, um, you know. However, yeah. As a more direct. Yeah. Yeah, so Terry's our planning commission uh, representative. So, yeah, if you're able to let us know when that happens, it, uh, there may be some of us that would would mind viewing that. Have you all signed up for the Gov delivery so that you get notifications? So you know your email problem. It, it, it's yeah. shared with me. <laughs> I get it. And I look. I'm like, I need to go through this. No, delete. Notice yourself. Call Art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up this uh, agenda item. Yeah. And so we're, we're at the most important agenda item, adjournment, unless anybody has an objection. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, you guys I, over here, I, you guys did an amazing presentation. Yes. So, yeah, that was nice great.